My name is Jeff Lee Reboron. I'm a registered nurse. Most of my fellow nurses regard themselves as healers of physical ailments. But let me tell you this, I am not like most of them. My calling in life has always been curing the sickness of the community, an ailment which we call ignorance. Back in my earlier years in the academe, I thought that there is nothing to learn about teaching. You just have to read your lessons, go to class, check attendance, deliver your lecture, give them a quiz or a long exam depending on your mood or their attitude during the lecture proper, record and compute their grades, then call it a day. It's as simple as that. As a neophyte teacher, I had a love-hate relationship with my teaching career. I love it because it pays the bills, but I hate it because it feels like it is not the right path for me. I get easily pissed off whenever I see students not paying attention. I am angered quickly when I do not see my students improving. I do not have enough patience to wait for them bloom. I always run at my own pace, and the students who can cope with my speed pass while those who cannot fail. As a nurse, I have always viewed ignorance like a disease, my classroom as the hospital, and learning as the cure. The students who enroll in my class either pass or fail, get cured or remain sick, learn or continue to be ignorant. That has always been my mantra, my teaching principle, and my professional philosophy. Upon being taken under the wings of Dr. Bremius tutelage, I realized that I have been too focused on teaching that I failed to check if my students are truly learning. On hindsight, I discovered that it was I who needs a lot of improving and learning to do. Our class in facilitating learning helped me understand the concepts of knowledge acquisition. The blended learning approach of this subject allowed me to learn on my own and at the same time learn from and with my teacher and classmates. In our activity one, I began to understand that my role as a teacher is not limited to being a lecturer but it can also extend towards being a motivator, counselor, initiator, and facilitator of knowledge. With the help of Dr. Bremio, I was able to unearth some of my weaknesses as a teacher. There is a need for me to arouse my learners' interest and cognitive involvement by providing interest-invoking activities and providing them with apt opportunities to transact with the lesson. More so, I learned that revisiting past concepts significantly improves the student's retention. These prior understandings should be tapped and connected to the new information to create meaningful realizations. I also began appreciating the fact that students are varied and that some are visual learners while others are auditory and kinesthetic learners. It is important to combine different strategies to better cater to the needs of all the students inside the classroom. Learning and thinking is a simultaneous process where one will cease to exist without the other. Therefore, there is a need to train the learners to be skeptical, to challenge the norms, and to ask questions. Activity 2 helped me understand the concepts of punishment and reinforcement. Although both punishment and reinforcement approaches are distinctly different in their practical application, both of them aim to help achieve the goals of learning by increasing the learner's positive behavior and decreasing undesired behavior. I wasn't too keen on giving positive reinforcements before, and I thought that pointing out what my students' weaknesses are was enough to help them improve. I now know that giving them compliments for a job well done is just as important. I also learned the significance of understanding the learning theories where my teaching style is rooted. My eyes were opened to the importance of social interaction in the acquisition of knowledge. Social constructivism forwards that all knowledge develops as a result of social interaction and language use and is, therefore, a shared rather than an individual experience. 
Thus, knowledge is formed not through observing the world, but through interpersonal interactions and social processes. The process of learning requires that the learners actively participate in creative activities and self-organization, rather than merely passively receiving information. This goes to show that teachers need to acknowledge the fact that they are not the sole source of knowledge inside the classroom. They should move their role from being the person who teaches to being the facilitator of learning. We teachers should challenge our learners to perform open-ended investigations and solve problems with realistic and meaningful contexts. They must be encouraged to speak up and share their learnings, inferences, and opinions with other members of their community. Activities like journal writing, debates, and other forms of reflection and exchange of ideas must be made as staple activities in the classroom. Learning is the primary goal of education, but the process of acquiring knowledge is just as important. In other words, the journey is just as remarkable as the destination. Activity 3 helped me appreciate the cognitive process of learning. I learned that cognition is the process of acquiring and understanding knowledge through our thoughts, experiences, and senses. We teachers must help our students to focus on the learning task at hand by gaining their attention, helping them store whatever they have learned, and giving them adequate opportunity to practice retrieval of such knowledge. It is also essential to make use of learning aids such as mnemonics, audiovisual guides, immersive activities, and feedback to reinforce the information. As a nurse, the split brain or brain lateralization phenomenon is not that foreign to me. I discovered that I could also use my nursing knowledge to help my students learn effectively. To do this, I simply have to understand how my students tick by knowing their inclinations, interests, strengths, and weaknesses. Also, the concept of nature versus nurture was also revisited in Activity 3. The metacognitive task reinforced my belief that great students are made and not born. It is our responsibility as teachers to provide the learners with optimal environmental conditions and try to go beyond our classroom roles. It is imperative that we also include the parents and the community in honing and bettering the skills, knowledge, and attitudes of the learners. Proper guidance and supervision learner-friendly milieus which promote intentional and reflective learning, good nutrition, adequate rest and recreational activities, and parental support are all tantamount in one's cognitive development. As my first semester in this new course draws to a close, I can, in all honesty, say that I am a changed man. I now have a renewed pride and sense of accomplishment knowing that in my hands lie the future of the generations to come. I can proudly say that I am a teacher. What's your superpowers? Mm -hmm.